pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon, and welcome to opening day in this bizarre television experiment. And I'm Tony Kornheiser, and if we can have a TV show, you can have a TV show. Welcome to PTI, PTI, I don't even know the name yet. Here's how it works. We yap until the time runs out on each topic. You hear a bell, we move on. Pretty simple, huh? We've got an expert who does college football for ABC, Brent Musburger, why don't you introduce yes, him? Yes, we do. We want to bring in somebody who's covering a lot of games and covering more than Tony sees for sure. Brent Musburger is going to join us from Montana. Brent, thanks for being with us. What do you, th yeah, what do you think? What are your initial reactions to this? Michael, I don't know why Tony keeps bleeding for Miami. We've got so many snaps ahead of us. There they are poised. Fresno State lost. Oregon lost. All they have to do now is hope that the Big 12 beats up on one another and that Oklahoma and Nebraska slides through unbeaten, that UCLA loses. Then they have to take care of business, and it'll be Miami and Oklahoma for the national championship. What is everyone so upset about? Well, you asked, me, you asked me what I'm bleeding about. They got to wait for four dominoes to fall. I mean, this is a team that got hosed last year, Brent. They make a schedule, which looks like a tough schedule. They open up at Penn State early in the season. They're at Florida State. You figure those are two losses. They win them both big, and here they are sitting on the outside looking in. Tony, Penn State and Florida State are hardly as good as they used to be. I mean, Joe Pa struggled at 0-4 to finally win for the first time. Florida State is rebuilding. And, and before you get carried away about last year, let us not forget that, by the way, Miami did lose that game up in Seattle, at least the last time I checked. So, yes, because they beat Florida State, you could make an argument that the Canes should have played Oklahoma. But I don't get carried away by it. It's been a pretty decent system so far. Well, you have seen all the big teams so far. How do you look at this? Do you agree Oklahoma 1, Nebraska 2, UCLA 3, Miami 4? Do you agree with that? Well, you know, I love the fact that OU and Nebraska are 1-2 because we're going to be doing that game this weekend. However, I would say, Tony, that if I had to pick one football game right now that I would love to see and I think the American public would like, it would be Miami and UCLA. I think they'd go up and down the field on each other. I think it would be a dramatic game. It would have the nation's best quarterback and the nation's best running back. I think it would be a monster of a game. Now, it may not come to pass. UCLA in particular has got a very tough road. Stanford, Washington State on the road, Oregon back down to the Rose Bowl. It's going to be very difficult for a Pac-10 team to go unbeaten, in my opinion. Brent, you mentioned a lot of snaps left in this season, and there are. Do you then see a team that's not in the top five or not in the top seven or eight coming from sort of the back of the pack? We're talking about time left between now and December to jump into that top five and maybe wind up in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, you know, Michael, Maryland is up there in the top ten. You mentioned them. They've got to take care of business in Tallahassee against Florida State. Going to be a very, very tough assignment. The schools to watch are several with one loss already because they lost early in the season. Michigan and the Big Ten can make a move. Tennessee and Florida in the SEC can make a huge move. And remember, their game was rescheduled for late in the year, the week before the SEC title game. So look for that team to emerge and step up and make a late run. Don't you think, I, am I the only one worried about the fact that it seems like statistics and computers are taking over football? It's not being played so much or determined by people on the field, but just by computer rankings all over the country? Tony, every time I land in an airplane in the middle of the winter, I love computers, my <laughs> friend, okay? I do not hold the BCS against these computer guys. But they're as biased as the voters in the AP and the coaches poll because, you know, nothing comes out of a computer that you don't feed into it. For example, the computer that comes out of Seattle, it's based entirely upon strength of conferences. They rate the Pac-10 right now the best in the country. That's why Washington was so highly ranked. Uh, nobody ranks the Big East that tough of an overall conference, that works against Miami and in the strength of schedule. But remember now, they can wind up with some quality wins. They're certainly going to get one. If they can beat Virginia Tech, that's not going to be an easy game for the Canes. All right, I wouldn't be able to let you go. i got a minute left. I'm saving this. I'm holding up a Northwestern helmet. Now, it's killing Wilbon that Northwestern lost to Penn State the other day. You did that game. You were um, remarkable in your objectivity, considering you went to Northwestern as Wilbon went to Northwestern. It almost was like, and I, I don't want to get between you and Wilbon, it was almost like you were rooting for Joe Paterno and not your old school. Uh, I might have been. You know, he's more biased than I am anyhow. I don't know what it was about his generation, you know. <laughs> 
We were supposed to be objective when I came out of Medill. I don't know what happened to Wilbon. Well, Wilbon, you're dying here. The Northwestern's having no yeah, gear now. I, I wasn't. Bruce has got a lot more class, and he was great in the broadcast, and I would have been kicking something. <laughs> do you ever feel that way? Do you, do you ever? I mean, I know you're objective, but do you ever say, gee, it would be nice if Northwestern won. They've been down for so long until about four or five years ago. Yeah, you have to fight it, Tony, but I got to tell you, uh, I always pull for the good story. I, I like a close game and a good story. And I really felt the best story was Joe Paterno finally winning the 323. I got to be honest about that. There have been other days when I've been around Northwestern when I thought, well, last year, for example, against Michigan. Come down late, got the fumble. I said, what a great ending if they can somehow stick it in. And as Michael knows, they did because he called you on the phone and says, did you see that Northwestern Michigan game? It was unbelievable. Brent, I get these calls sometimes at 2 in the morning when he's <laughs> watching them against Hawaii. Brent Musburger, thank you so much for being with us. Right, Mike. Every day we do this show, we make terrible errors. Well, you do. I do. And Stat Boy lets us know what they are. Stat Boy, what do you got for us? Uh, not too bad today, guys, for a couple of newspaper guys trying to do a TV show. Mike, you dropped the ball once, though talking about how cocky the Rams were, 31-17 to 17 when they went for an onside kick. No, not really, 31-7 in the third quarter. As for you, Tony, if you want to pawn yourself off as a soccer guru, let's, let's call the soccer field or a soccer pitch, Don't. not a soccer court. <laughs> Did I call it a court? Yeah, maybe your boy Bob the Lee can teach you court? a few lessons about that. That's a soccer court? Yeah. Ah, ah, well, I wouldn't have called it a pitch. All right, we're in the final minute. We like to end the show with a bit of a punch. It's a chance to get in a bunch of stories we didn't have time for in the show. So without further ado, let's go to the big finish. Ready? I'm ready. Pete Sampras says he's taking some time off. Will he ever win another Grand Slam? He's done with Grand Slams. No more big tournaments for Sampras. Not even Wimbledon. Not even Wimbledon. Maryland is still undefeated. Will the Terrapins on Saturday go to Florida State and beat the Seminoles? Two-part question. They will go to Florida State. <laughs> they will not beat the Seminoles. I, it'll be a closer game, but they won't win. The Islanders haven't lost all year. Are they for real? Yes. Yashin, Osgood, Pekka. That's the reason they're for real, even more importantly than the acquisition of Yager by the Capitals. You know, I root for them because I'm a Long Island boy. No, I heard that somewhere. Notre Dame beat USC this weekend. Will Bob Davies still be back next year? Uh, yeah. What do you think? I think no. <laughs> Signed a five-year deal. The new Johnny Depp movie from hell, number one at the box office. Will you go? No, I don't. Uh, Johnny Depp, no. Oh, please. Johnny Depp is fabulous. That's it. We're out of time. We'll try to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. And I'm Mike Wilbon. Tomorrow we'll bicker about the Yankees, the Eagles, and a lot of other junk. Good night. <laughs>